Hi everyone, thanks for watching. I'm Simon from Homesite, and today we're going to be looking at the Sonoff RF bridge, how it interacts with Home Assistant when we want to send a signal. Now you might think, why would I want to do that? But I've got some really cool tricks up my sleeve and some great ways that I use it in my Home Assistant. So, let's go! <laughs> So for this video, I'm going to assume that you've got your Sonoff RF bridge, that it's set up with TAS motor, and the MQTT is pointing to Mosquito or some sort of MQTT broker on your home assistant. If you haven't done that yet, check a look at, have a look at the top, and there'll be a suggested video there for you. And that'll take you through flashing a Sonoff RF bridge with TAS motor, setting up on home assistant, and getting it to, well, to this point here. So at the moment, I've got a couple of RF sensors, I've got some door sensors here, I've got a PIR and I've got a front doorbell. Now I did all these on the last video, but what we're going to do today is we're going to get an RF signal sending out from the Sonoff RF bridge. Now one way we can do that is by using the buttons on the Sonoff RF bridge. Now you're saying what buttons are on there, but if you go to the web page you've got this 1 through 16 and if I hit one of those, I'm going to press number 1, and go to my console, you'll see that I sent out RF key one. Now, you can program these and set them up to be certain signals, and they're normally six digit signals that get sent out with RF, but that's a bit faffy, isn't it? So we're not gonna do that. It'd be much cooler to do it from a button within Home Assistant. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to File Editor. Now, for those of you in the UK, you might remember Blue Peter, and here's one I made earlier. Well, I've already made the code. So I'm going to hit enter a couple of times because you'll need to add, if you haven't added it already, the domain of switches. So switch colon. Now I'm going to paste in the code. Here's one I made earlier. For you Yanks, you're not going to get that. So I'm going to put this code in the description below. I'll also put it up here so you can have a little look. Now, what have we got? Platform, MQTT, fairly self-explanatory. Name, ring doorbell, again, fairly self-explanatory. Now this bit here, this is really important. Now, I've called the topic for my RF bridge, RF hyphen bridge. And you'll, you'll need to make that the topic for yours. Now this is the command topic. The availability topic is there as well. We don't need to worry about that one too much, but I would just put it in. We've got payload availability online, offline, state topic, again, telly, forward slash, RF hyphen bridge, forward slash result. Now we've got some value template stuff. Now this bit here is the really important bit. If you've got a particular code that you want to send, then you'll need to enter it here, where I've highlighted. I've got five zeros and a number one. Now that's my payload on. I've also got a payload off of five zeros, number one, underscore, off. Now that's not going to get sent. This is the one that's going to get sent, that's the important one. I've also got a state, and that's going to match the same as these. So the payload on is going to match the state on, and the payload off is going to match the state off. Now make sure you put a hash at the beginning, otherwise it won't work. I'm going to put optimistic true, so it assumes it's on to start with. Retain is false, we don't need retain because this the, the RF sensor won't cope with the re retain part of it. Now QoS, this is going to be the highest level of quality of service. So once we've set all that up and we're happy, I'm going to press save and we'll see what happens next. After, of course, we've gone into check configuration and we've restarted. So while you're waiting for your home assistant to reboot, now might be a good time to like this video because it's a really good one and subscribe to the page and therefore you won't miss out on any new ones. Right, but home assistant's restarted, so now we can crack on. Now if I go back to my overview, now I haven't messed with this Lovelace interface yet, so you can see that ring doorbell is on there automatically. But I've created another one, dashboard, and I'm going to edit this dashboard here, and I'm simply going to add a button. Now, because it's the, a new one that hasn't been used yet, it's going to appear there automatically. Now, I can change the icon. Oh, I'm going to do MDI. Oops, MDI. Uh, I could do door. Actually, I'm going to do MDI bell. 
I'm going to hide the name so I know what it's for. I'm going to press save. If I close that, I can send out an RF signal. Now, if I go to 192, this is my TAS motor, and I go to my console. Now, I can see that this RF code 00001 is being sent out. So if I toggle that one over there and this one over here, I can... Oh, we've got a new thing that wasn't me. This is just a, uh, a state. I can press that and we can see that it gets sent out. There we go, there's my RF code. Now, why have I done that? Well, what I'm gonna do now is I've got a, a doorbell over here. Now I'm gonna set my, my doorbell to listen for a code and then I'm gonna hit that button and that doorbell is then gonna learn that code. I say doorbell, I mean doorbell receiver, as in the thing that makes the noise, not the RF doorbell that's on the front of the house. So, I'm going to stick my doorbell into Perry mode. So that's it in Perry mode, and if I hit this button here, we should see that it gets a little bleep and tells it that it's ready. Now, theory goes that if I hit this button now, it takes it out of pairing mode, I press this one, it makes the doorbell go. Awesome. So now we can control our doorbell from our home system. Now, but the front doorbell, as in the doorbell on the actual front of the house, now doesn't work. But we know we've got that as an input. So now we can take our front doorbell, when someone comes and presses the button, we can receive that into home assistant, and then ring the doorbell, as in send a signal to the receiver, and make a noise and tell everyone that someone's here when we want to. Now, why might we not want to? Now, we've got fairly young children. When the doorbell goes, that's a bit of an event. They want to go and see who's there. If they're in bed, they still want to go and see someone who's there. So after, let's say, eight o'clock at night, I could not let the doorbell ring. Or I could not let the doorbell ring upstairs, but still ring downstairs. Or I could play a different tone to the doorbell, as in the doorbell receiver, that a different signal to the doorbell receiver that plays a quieter one or a different tune. Now, that obviously relies on the receiver that you've got. Now, mine can cope with multiple signals and, and tie that to different volumes and different tones as well. So next, we can create our automation to tell the doorbell what times we want it to ring and what times we don't. So I'm going to do this in Node Red. So I'm going to, we're going to jump into Node Red. For those of you who aren't familiar with Node Red, there's a, other videos on how to get it installed, how to set it up. It's a visual based programming tool. You drag nodes on, you wire them up, and it does the logic for you. Here we go, so here's our canvas. First thing we're gonna do is drag on an event state. Now, full disclosure, I'm not gonna use my doorbell because I can't be bothered to get up and keep running out to the front door. I'm gonna use a door sensor. So I'm going to use that to trigger the on state and simulating when someone presses the doorbell. First thing, we're going to edit so this, this event state. This is looking for when the state changes. So I'm going to put doorbell and I'm going to pretend that it's the doorbell. Now I'm also going to open developer tools in a new tab because I always find that really useful to make sure I get the right names of my things. Now then, we are looking for binary sensor dot your door because that's what I've called my RF sensor. So by the sensor your door and I know that currently when it's closed it's off when it's open it goes to on and that'd be the same it goes to on when the doorbell is pressed. So I'm going to change that to on. So if the state is on this is just a friendly name server is home assistant entity ID is your doorbell, or in this case, my, my door sensor. If state is on, then we can do something. It creates these two little points here, and we can wire that to whatever we like to. So next, I'm gonna do a call service. I'm gonna wire up if the doorbell goes is on, as in, and is true, we can wire that to there. Now this, I'm gonna call ring doorbell. Server as home assistant. This is going to be home assistant as well but for the domain the service is turn on entity id 
Again, we can look at it, look up it in here. So we're looking for switch dot ring doorbell. So we can copy that. Or in theory, we should be able to type. Sometimes it pre-populates. Anyway, switch dot ring doorbell that we've copied from developer tools and press done. Now I'm going to press deploy. No warning messages, that's good, successfully deployed. Now the theory is, once this goes to connected, running, I'm going to pull it apart, and it rings the doorbell. That's pretty cool, right? Now, we could have just done that with our RF sensor straight to our doorbell. So this is where the clever bit comes in. We can now change this state so that it only works within a certain time range. So we're going to sign, search for the, oh yeah, the time range. I'm going to delete this wire, move this over here, and if the doorbell is rung, or in this case my contact is opened, I'm going to wire this up to here, and I'm going to change this from start time is 0800, end time is 20, 8 o'clock at night. And I'm going to call this 8 till 8. And press done. Now, if it's between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., as in within those times, I want it to ring the doorbell. And if it's outside of that time, I don't want it to do anything. So I'm going to press deploy. Currently, it's, it's about quarter past 11 at night. So the theory is now, if I pull this contact apart, I don't wake up any children. Looks good, right? So it's now the next day, it's about half past two, and we want the doorbell to ring. So hopefully, when I open this door sensor, it should go through the flow, it should realise it's between eight in the morning and eight at night, and we can see it's run and we can see the doorbells run. So there we go. Now, it might be that you don't quite want this, but within Node-RED there's lots and lots of flexibility. We could rig it up that it only rings if someone's at home. Um, we could have it, if we're not at home, it rings anyway, but sends a message to my phone through the Home Assistant push notifications. It might be that if we're not at home, it lights up the Sonos systems and makes a load of dogs bark uh, to make it think that someone's at home or to make it think there's a big dog at home. So there's a myriad of different things we can do. This is just one. So we're all done. Thanks for watching. If you've in taken something from this video, please like it. If you'd like to see more, I'm going to be doing a Node Red Masterclass very soon. Please subscribe to make sure you don't miss out. Put anything in the comments that you think you wanted to see, anything you want to see differently, any suggestions, tips and tricks, I'm always open to comments and I'll always respond. So thanks again, I've been Simon from Homesite and we'll see you next time.